A truly groundbreaking day, everyone. SpaceX has just announced the remarkable major improvements to the Super Heavy V3 grid fins, and the changes are far more extraordinary than anyone expected. In addition to that, testing for Flight 10 has now been completed, which means the launch is closer than ever. Meanwhile, NASA has successfully completed fueling operations for the Orion spacecraft in preparation for Artemis 2. Let us explore all these developments in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The release of Super Heavy V3 has been widely anticipated, and now the wait is finally drawing to an end. While we still need more time before we see a Starship in the V3 configuration, the upgraded Super Heavy booster will make its debut very soon. Booster 18 is now in the final stages of stacking inside the Mega Bay, and the aft section of B19 has already been spotted at the build site. For B18, the installation of the field transfer tube has been completed, but the forward section is still missing. This forward section is the most upgraded part of the new Super Heavy design, featuring two of the most significant enhancements, the integration of hot staging and the redesigned grid fins. One of these upgrades, the grid fins, was recently revealed directly by SpaceX on X, formerly known as Twitter. The company stated, the first grid fin for the next generation Super Heavy booster. This confirms that the image shows the very first grid fin produced for the V3 booster, and there is a strong likelihood that it is destined for B18. While it has not yet been installed on the forward section, this is not unusual. In earlier Super Heavy builds, the grid fins were often attached only after cryogenic proof testing. This means there is no reason to worry about delays in B-18's progress. We can expect the forward section to be rolled over for stacking within the next few days. Once stacking is complete, B-18 will be transported to the Massey test site where the new QDV3 booster system has already been prepared to support cryogenic trials. Looking more closely at the new grid fin design, the real-life images closely match what was described in earlier technical presentations. The fins are no longer perfectly square, instead they now feature an octagonal shape. Perhaps the most striking change is their size. SpaceX has confirmed that these fins are 50% larger than the previous version, with Musk humorously describing them as a gigantic waffle. This increase in size is meant to deliver far greater control during navigation and landing, especially since the number of fins will be reduced from 4 to 3. The structure is also significantly reinforced for added strength and durability, with an estimated mass of around 3 tons. This increase in weight is not just due to their size, but also because of a new functional role. These grid fins will now serve as part of the catching system. In earlier designs, the catching mechanism and the grid fins were two separate systems. However, with the V3 booster, SpaceX has integrated them into a single structure. The newly released images show that the catching point is mounted directly beneath the grid fin, close to its central shaft. SpaceX explained that these new fins will be used for vehicle lift and catch, which also helps explain why they are now built for higher strength. The catching point itself resembles a large pin with a hole and extends slightly beyond the thickness of the grid fin to allow direct interaction with the landing rails on the Mechazilla arms. Interestingly, some observers have noted that the design is more similar to the catching point used on Starship itself. This makes sense when considering that SpaceX's two orbital launch towers, Pad 1 and 2, each have different catching setups. Pad 1 has arms optimized for Super Heavy, while Pad 2 is tuned for catching the ship. By adapting the catching point design, Super Heavy becomes more flexible and potentially capable of landing on either pad. That said, the pin on Super Heavy will be slightly longer to ensure compatibility with Pad 1's hardware. Since the V3 booster will only feature three grid fins, the catching points will be installed on the two symmetrical side fins, leaving the central fin without one. This means that the fin shown in SpaceX's photograph is most likely one of the two side fins that will directly connect with the chopsticks during landing. The grid fins have also been repositioned lower on the booster. In earlier versions, this was done primarily to reduce exposure to the extreme heat and pressure generated by the ship's engines during separation. However, SpaceX has now stated that the new placement is also intended to align with the tower catch arms. Structurally, the fin's shaft, actuator, and other fixed components will now be mounted alongside the main fuel tank. This raises is intriguing engineering questions. For example, how does placing these components so close to cryogenic fuel affect their operation? Could extreme temperatures or fuel pressure impact the reliability of the system? These are the kinds of details that will be fascinating to see addressed as testing progresses. With these changes, the V3 grid fins are shaping up to be one of the most visually and technically impressive upgrades ever made to the Super Heavy design. Their increased size, integration with the catching system, and strategic repositioning all point toward a booster that will be far more capable during its high-energy return to the launch site. 
The improvements are aimed at ensuring precision, reliability, and reduced fuel consumption by enabling a higher angle of attack during re-entry, thereby lowering aerodynamic drag and improving control. Given the current progress, it is likely that we will see these massive grip fins arriving at the Mega Bay for installation sometime next month. Before that happens, the forward section featuring the hot staging ring will be completed and stacked onto B18. This will be followed by the installation of the other major V3 upgrade, the Raptor 3 engines. If everything stays on track, we may witness the first launch of the Starship V3 system before the end of this year. And to ensure a smooth transition into the V3 era, SpaceX must demonstrate first strong performance in its upcoming missions, particularly with the fast-approaching Flight 10. In the previous update, SpaceX attempted a spin prime test with Starship's engines. This procedure spins up the engines and flows propellant without ignition, verifying both engine stability and the fuel delivery system. However, the attempt was cut short during fueling, signaling that something had gone wrong. The cause became clear on the evening of August 12th, when images from the launch site revealed workers addressing a leak in the cryogenic flex hose of the fuel injection system. The component is critical for handling ultra-cold propellants, and any failure could pose safety hazards or affect performance. The leak fully explained the abrupt halt in fueling during the earlier attempt. SpaceX acted quickly. Technicians replaced the faulty hose and carried out thorough inspections to confirm system integrity. Thanks to this swift response, preparations resumed without significant delay. The following day, the 13th of August, SpaceX scheduled another round of testing with a road closure from 6 in the morning to 7 in the evening. Once the pad was cleared, fueling preparations began. Thick venting soon billowed from the OLM tank farm, and the vehicle itself, clear signs that propellant loading was underway. During this operation, auxiliary systems, such as the flaps in the detonation suppression system, were also tested. With all systems ready, the spin prime test proceeded. Propellant flowed into the engines without ignition, following engineers to confirm stable fuel transfer and operational performance. No issues were reported, and the test concluded with detanking as propellants were safely removed. This successful spin prime validated the Flight 10 hardware and confirmed the reliability of the recently swapped engine, removing the need for further static fire testing before launch. With the test complete, Ship 37 moved into its next phase of preparation. A brief road closure was scheduled for the early hours of the 14th from 3 to 8 in the morning for S-37 return from spin prime. This indicated the vehicle would be lifted from the launch mount and transported for post-test inspections. The ship quick disconnect was opened, the chopsticks lowered, and a transport stand positioned at the pad. At the time of reporting, the lift had not yet occurred, though it will likely com be completed soon afterward. Inspections following this spin prime are expected to be brief. Once cleared, S-37 will receive its FTS and payload integration systems before returning to the pad for mating with B-16. This could occur around 22 to the 25th of this month. Meanwhile, the orbital launch mount will undergo modifications as temporary test systems are removed. This work should take only a few days, allowing B-16 to roll out potentially before the 20th. The Flight 10 launch window remains open until the 28th. If progress continues at the current pace, an August 27th liftoff would fall exactly three months after Flight 9, aligning with SpaceX's rapid testing cadence. All signs point toward launch day approaching quickly. Technical challenges have been met with rapid solutions. Testing has proceeded efficiently, and the hardware is nearly ready. Flight 10 is now firmly in sight, with the stage set and the countdown truly underway. When speaking of preparations, SpaceX's Starship is not the only major space project in motion. NASA's Artemis II mission is also progressing steadily toward its historic flight. Now officially rescheduled for February of 2026, two months earlier than its previous April target, Artemis II is just over half a year away, and work is accelerating across multiple NASA facilities. In a key milestone, the Orion spacecraft for Artemis II has completed fueling operations at the Multi-Payload Processing Facility, or MPPF for short, at the Kennedy Space Center. Since arriving in May, Orion has undergone weeks of system checks, subsystem tests, and critical verifications before loading propellants. 
This step readies the spacecraft's propulsion and life support systems for the next phase of assembly. Following fueling, Orion was moved to the Launch Abort System Facility, or LASF, where engineers will install its 44-foot or 13.4-meter launch abort system. This vital safety mechanism can rapidly propel the crew capsule away from the Space Launch System rocket in an emergency during ascent. The structure combined with its aerodynamic fairing forms a protective shell around Orion and contains multiple thruster systems for high-powered aborts, controlled genesising, and attitude control during rapid separation. Once the abort system is integrated, the fully assembled Orion stack will be transported to the vehicle assembly building. In High Bay 3, it'll be lifted atop the SLS rocket, which is nearing the end of its own assembly. This stacking process will be one of the final major steps before integrated testing of the completed Artemis 2 launch vehicle. Meanwhile, the Artemis 2 crew has begun suits on evaluations inside the actual Orion capsule. Wearing their bright orange Orion crew survival system spacesuits, they connected to the spacecraft's life support and communications systems. These tests simulate both pre-launch and in flight conditions, providing valuable data on ergonomics, mobility, and system performance under mission-like scenarios. Although NASA still officially lists April 2026 as the launch target, aiming for February builds schedule margin, giving time to resolve any issues without risking delays beyond April. This measured yet proactive planning underscores NASA's commitment to crew safety and mission success. With Orion moving through integration milestones, the SLS close to readiness, and the crew already rehearsing in realistic conditions, Artemis II is steadily advancing toward its historic mission, the first crewed flight of the Artemis program and humanity's next journey beyond Earth's orbit. In any case, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.